My name is Mary. I'm here with my father, Curtis. We don't always see eye to eye, but we love each other very much. So today we're going to ask each other some questions that we've never seen before. And we're doing this to build our relationship and hopefully get to know each other a little bit better. So are you ready? I am ready. Let's get started. Question one, when you describe me to your friends, what do you say? I say she is my uh, second daughter. She's very bright and I love her. So I guess you can ask me the same question. When you describe me to your friends, what do you say? I say that you are, I probably would say that you're very different from me. Um, we are different religions. Um, we, you're very conservative, I'm not. But I say that you are a very hard worker and that you are a very talented, driven man who has done a lot in his life. So those are probably some of the things I would say. Thank you. What is your favorite memory of me when I was younger? Um, we had a Thanksgiving uh, dinner and you were dressed up like a uh, one of the pilgrims and we wanted you to act, uh, play act, and you didn't want to, and you said, I don't want to, I don't want to. But then you finally succumbed to it and you went out and you did a great job. We had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, I know, we have that on video. And you pull it out every once in a while and you would make us watch it. So I remember this memory. Um, what is your favorite memory of me when I was younger? Well, I don't have any memories of you when you were younger, but I have memories from when I was younger of you. And I remember a lot on Saturday mornings, we would barge in, me and my sister, who's 10 months younger than me, we would barge into your room and you would play with us. We would do tickle torture and rolling machine where you would basically, it was kind of physical play that you would do as our dad. So I have fond memories of, of kind of rough housing and, and playing and It was a lot of fun, time. wasn't it? It was fun. When was the last time you cried? Probably pretty recently, I cried when I have friends that pass away. I don't remember exactly the last time, but uh, I've had uh, a lot of my friends and cousins, and uh, of course my parents have all passed away. I'm getting old, <clears throat> so that happens, but uh, that's probably when I've cried. When was the last time you cried? I got teary last night when my oldest child graduated from high school uh, because that seems like a big milestone both from, from my, my kid but for me as a parent as well. Uh, just kind of watching them take that next step uh, or take that step towards the rest of their life was, was a little emotional for me and I'm not a very sentimental person. I don't tend to get sentimental at milestones. Uh, so that was kind of a, a surprise to me. That I, that I felt those big emotions enough to make me get a little teary-eyed. Um, my husband was on the stage last night at graduation shaking hands with all the graduates because he's on the school board. And um, when he hugged uh, Frankie, my, my child, um, I felt an Im immense sense of pride in my family. He was the most distinguished on the, phone, on the stage. Yes, <laughs> shaking hands with all the senior, the high school seniors. But yeah, that was a really nice moment. What advice from your parents has stuck with you in life? What advice from my parents? Well, you've given me lots of advice over the years in the form of kind of silly quips and one-liners. Uh, you always say today is the first day of the rest of your life. Conquer whatever you're doing. Um, so I think there's, there's those little quips that you've given me over the years that are I take his advice. Yeah, I have about three pages I read. You've written them all down and you print them out and give them to us every year Thanksgiving. at Thanksgiving. <laughs> so we, we know all of your advice. <laughs> There's lots of it. I hope you uh, listen to it. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> what advice from your parents has stuck with you in life? My mother was uh, a school teacher and she always said you need to get education. She was big on education and we were gonna to go to college. It didn't make any difference if, it wasn't if, it was when and where. So that always stuck with me, which 
uh, we did participate in education, which I think I appreciate that a lot. My dad, he didn't give me a lot of advice. He was a very hard worker, probably the hardest working man I ever knew. He was a farmer, grew up on a farm. And uh, his advice was uh, basically the example of showing what to do for providing for a family. Yeah, I know that you've passed that education thing down and made your own kids get educated. That was always very important to you. Well, all five of you got a degree in, uh, from something. university, so I'm very proud of it. <laughs> My degree is in film, but <laughs> really? probably could have got something a little bit more practical. Uh, no, it was good. But it was good. What do you think about my skills as a parent? Well, I only can observe what your, how your children react to you, and they love you. And they always uh, seem very positive about you as a, as a parent. So I think you're doing a great job. What do you think about my skills as a parent? Well, I think you were always doing your very best for us. Um, you worked very hard, and that was obvious, which means you weren't always around. Uh, you were busy with work and with church and, and other things, but you know, we, we knew that you loved us. Like that was, that was always very obvious in all the things that you did, and you always were there to, when it mattered, you were there. I remember we always went to your concerts and your uh, your recitals and so forth. Yeah, we were very important. We were very involved in school, all of us kids, doing a lot of different activities, and you did show up when it, when it mattered, and I remember that. So, thanks for for doing that. Is it your turn or mine? Um, it's your turn. If you could change one thing about your life, what would it be? If I could change one thing about my life. You know, this is this is a tough question because I I have I have some issues. I mean, there's no secret there. I have issues with anxiety. I have likely have ADHD. Um, I've been diagnosed with these things, and they make life a lot harder. Um, and I wish I didn't have to deal with with those things all the time. I wish I wasn't so anxious. I wish I could go through life with the ease that I see other people, but at least show, you know, on the outward uh, appearances, they go through life easily. Um, so I wish I didn't have to deal with, with a lot of those is men mental health issues um, that plague so many people. It's, it, it just makes life harder. And, uh, but otherwise, I mean, I have a lot of privilege. Um, you know, I, I am educated. I have a, a job that I enjoy. I have great kids, a great husband. Um, I'm secure in knowing that I'll always have a place to live. You know, I have a lot of things going for me in my life and I feel very fortunate. So there's not a lot that I would necessarily change about that, but I do wish that I didn't struggle as much with some of those issues. If you could change one thing about your life, what would it be? Um, I've had a great life and I don't feel sorry about much of anything that I've done. I have no fears. And uh, I like to work hard, and I still, at my age, still like to do investment and in properties and uh, various things. But uh, probably maybe uh, communicate more often with my wife. Sometimes we seem, as we've gotten older, it's a little harder to communicate. She does her thing, I do my thing. Yeah. That does sound like it would be a little more difficult. What's one family tradition you've kept up and what's one that you have let go? Well, we've always had big Thanksgiving dinners. Uh, Janice, my wife, loves to cook and she cooks, uh, she does all the cooking and she has a big, big spread at Thanksgiving. We have all of our family come in and I think every year we have about 30, 30, 35 people. That's a tradition that we've had for many, many years, and uh, I love it. Uh, a tradition that we've given up, I don't know that we've given up any traditions much. Uh, holidays are fun, and we do that, but we still keep those traditions. Without children, there's certain things you don't do that you used to do, like maybe go out and go to 
ball games together and things like that. But uh, other than that, no, we haven't given up much of our traditions. I was like, you still go to some ball games with, with Rich, with our, my Once brother. Once in a while. Once yeah. in a while. And, and uh, we enjoy that a lot. What's one family tradition you've kept up and what one that you have let go? So we still go to Thanksgiving at your house. <laughs> so that's one that we've kept up. We still do the big Thanksgiving dinner with you all. Um, as far as traditions in, in my own family, um, we, we don't really have a ton of traditions that we do. Um, we do Christmas every year with my in-laws and we do Thanksgiving with you all. Uh, but things we've given up is I just don't have the bandwidth to do a lot of decorating and kind of cooking and things like that because I'm so busy with my job and just trying to maintain an adult life <laughs> that um, a lot of those things have kind of gone by the wayside for me. So I don't do a lot of those things with my kids. Like it's almost pulling teeth to do things like carving pumpkins or dyeing eggs because it just feels like so much work. Um, so I've had to let a lot of those things that people typically think of as traditions go. Well, you're busy all the time. You work very hard. Yeah. So those are some things I've given up over the years. What is my biggest strength as a person? I think you are, when you start something, you are dedicated. You never give up. And I saw that in school. When you were in high school, you always had your projects done two weeks before they were due. And you were always, it was important that you finish what you start. That's, uh, I think, very good. What is my biggest strength as a person? Well, I think it's no surprise, and we've already talked about this a little bit, is just your work ethic is incredible. You're 81 years old, and you still get up every day and do your work, and I, you're going to drop dead working. I mean, that's kind of a running joke because that's something you love and you're a very hard worker. You're very dedicated to what you do and you enjoy it. I like what I do. Yeah. I've been told if you uh, stop working when you retire, you die quickly or early. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> what song makes you think of me? What song? Oh, gosh. These days when you pick us up from the airport when we fly in to visit, because we live in different states, so we, we visit you a couple times a year, and you're always listening to like this really old timey country music. Who who is it that you're listening to in your car? Oh, Johnny Carson. Or I Johnny mean Cash. Johnny Cash and uh, Alan Jackson, Marty Robbins. The really old stuff. <laughs> and I like Peter Paul and Mary. Yes, Peter Paul and Mary is probably the one thing that our it's like our family music, because that's what we used to listen to on road trips is the folk music. And you wonder why I turned out so progressive liberal. You made me listen to protest music when I was a little kid. <laughs> we were listening to Peter, Paul, and Mary in the car. So that makes me think of you for sure. What song makes you think of me? I don't know that there is a song that makes me think of you uh, specifically. Peter, Paul, and Mary? Peter, Paul, and Mary. Makes I you guess. think of all the kids? Yeah. What is something you've learned from me? I think I've learned that you have a, a good heart and you're willing to forgive people when they sh have shortcomings. I know that uh, when Justin was going through some difficult times, that was very hard for you, but you've overcome that and you've uh, mended all of those feelings, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Justin is my husband. Um, yeah, and we, like I said earlier, we went through some rocky stuff, um, but yeah, we definitely have, Worked, we worked through that. Mended defense. <laughs> it was a lot of work. <laughs> He'll even tell you that it was a lot of work, but we both were committed to it. And, and made very it. important. <laughs> what is something you've learned from me? I think something that you are really good at is you're very committed to things you believe in and causes that you believe in. And again, while we may not necessarily agree on the same causes at this point in our lives, um, I think that kind of commitment and that um, desire to make the world a better place is something that I've learned from you. Um, we go about it in different ways, but uh, I think just seeing that commitment that you have to things that are important to you and that you believe in is something that I've definitely learned 
over the years from watching you. What is the biggest thing you think I have done wrong with my life? <laughs> I don't know that you've done a lot of things wrong. I do think you could be nicer to your wife, to my mom. Sometimes you're very hard on her and that, that makes me sad. And I, I, I do wish that that's, that's something that I would really love to see you two work on together. Yeah. I think that you two could work on your relationship. I, like you said, it's getting harder as you're getting older and I've seen some, I've, it's, we noticed that as kids, so. I'll take that into consideration. What is the biggest thing you think I have done wrong with my life? I think when you went on your mission to, you were in Tanzania? Or, uh, I was in Tasmania. Tasmania. I was a Mormon missionary. Just uh, And she, I... and you said, I cannot believe that those people cannot believe in God based on the beauty of the, the circumstance they have. And I think you've kind of given up that feeling and thought. Yeah, I definitely have changed my views on religion and, and God over the last couple of decades of my life. Um, so that is definitely a change I've made. I would like you not to change, but that's what you've decided to do. I respect your decision, but I wish it were different. Fair enough. What is the secret that you have never told me that would surprise me today? I don't know that I have a lot of secrets that would surprise you. I mean, I could tell you a little bit more. We could delve more into the religion thing, and I could tell you that I probably haven't really believed in it since I was in my 20s. I stayed for a long time after I stopped believing because I felt like that's what you and mom wanted me to do. Um, and that was hard. It was, I, I felt like this very much push and pull between what I, what I felt in my heart was what I believed and what I felt like I should be doing to make other people happy. And it was, it was hard. I, I spent a lot of time really conflicted. And when I stepped away, that went away. And, then, and I, but I felt immense guilt and shame because I was letting people down. So I don't know if that's necessarily a secret, but that is something that may or may not surprise you that it, it was a lot longer of a process than, it wasn't an, an immediate decision, it was many years of wrestling <laughs> with, with my beliefs, so. What is the best and worst part about getting older? The best part about getting older is that you stop caring so much what other people think. Um, I really, you know, I still care about some things and I'm working on that, but you really kind of become your more authentic self, I think, as you get older and you start realizing that it doesn't really matter as much what other people think. The worst part about getting older is just physically it's hard. <laughs> it's been, it's, it gets harder because your body starts to not want to do the things. I used to be a very active runner. I ran, I run over a dozen half marathons. I ran a marathon and now I just can't do that anymore. And it's, that's been really hard for me. So, it, it's, and I know that as I get older, things are gonna get harder and it's just kind of accepting that. And I'm sure you can tell me about that. So let me read you the question. What is the best and worst part about getting older? The worst part is you're physically unable to, like you said, do things that you were love to do in the past. And you ache more, you uh, have more issues with health and uh, you're just not as energetic as you used to be. I, and especially the last two or three years, I've felt that very keenly. I don't, uh, I don't have the agility and ability to, to do things I would like to do. Uh, where, the best thing is I know that uh, I'm getting closer to entering into the spirit world. Uh, I think uh, maybe I have a year to 15 years at the most. And there's a scripture that says, if you keep the commandments of God and endure to the end, you are blessed in all things. 
and you will enter into heaven in a state of never-ending happiness. I'm looking for that never-ending happiness. What do we do differently as parents than you and mom did? You like to go to Disney. I don't care much about Disney. <laughs> we've been once. <laughs> and the kids are 17 and 14, so we've been one time. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I think you do a lot of similar things. I, I would like to see you do more prayer in your home, but other than that, uh, I think you do good. What do we do differently as parents? Um, I mean, there's a few things that that we definitely that you definitely do differently than we are doing as parents. I know Justin and I are very hands on. Mom was very hands on. You were a little more hands off when we were kids. Again, because you were busy building your business and doing church things. Um, and Justin's actually the primary parent in our household. He is the one who picks the kids up from school, takes them to school, goes to all the school meetings. Um, so that's something very different in that I had a stay at home mom and you worked very hard. And in our relationship, mine and Justin's relationship, um, we both kind of take on those roles. We both work. We both do a lot of the parenting. But like I said, he's more of the primary parent and does more of the parenting. So I think that that's kind of a big shift from the way things were 20, 30, 40 years ago, um, where it just, I think the role of the father has changed quite a bit. Um, and we're seeing differences in that area. So I think that's something that we do actually quite a bit differently than, than you and mom. Our two oldest sons were uh, quite a bit older than you guys. And I spent a lot of time with them and their sports and their activities and scouting. I didn't spend that much time with you girls because, I, again, I wasn't home a lot. Uh, probably spending 20 to 30 hours a week in church work, running a major company, and all of those things. And that was, uh, my your mom raised you girls more than me. I admit that. But she was a good mother. She was a good mom. What don't I understand about your life right now? Um, I think one thing you don't understand necessarily, we have a child who has some differing needs. Um, and it's been very difficult sometimes over the years to raise, to raise him. You know, there's times where I don't think that you've necessarily understood how difficult it's been and that we are doing the very best we can as parents and that a lot of the issues that we've run into are not anyone's fault. They're just the way things are. Um, and I feel like sometimes there's been some blame um, for kind of some of the troubles we've had with our kid. Um, and so that's something that I wish you could understand a little bit better is just how hard it, the, the struggles that we've had over the last 17 years trying to raise this special person that is definitely not like everyone else. I know that uh, you had a lot of depression in your life, uh, both you and Justin. And I'm not sure if Frankie has that. He doesn't seem to have depression. But uh, I don't understand that concept. I don't understand depression. It's not in my vocabulary, really. So it's hard for me to understand that. What don't I understand about your life right now? I don't know what you don't understand about my life. I, I guess you don't understand how committed I am to my religion, perhaps. But other than that, I don't know that you know have any misconceptions or understanding. I think I actually know how committed you are, and that makes it hard because I know that that's a rift between the two of us. It's probably one of the major rifts between the two of us. I don't think it's a rift. I, I mean, I, I don't feel any difficult feelings toward you for that. I just uh, wish it was different. What was the hardest thing you went through as a child? My dad was not very loving, never expressed love, and uh, never went to any of my activities or, or sports or anything, which I wish he had of. That was the hardest thing. Yeah, that sounds hard. What was the hardest thing you went through as a child? I don't know that I necessarily had a hard childhood. 
I think you and mom did everything you could to cushion anything difficult that was going on outside um, of kind of our little insulated family group. Um, I know that there were financial troubles and things that you always tried to keep from us, not necessarily keep from us, but you tried to cushion the blow so that we never felt that as kids. Um, I do think it was, there were some times that were, it was difficult having a sister so close in age to me. Uh, we are very different and uh, we became very close in college, but while we were growing up, we were very different. And I think there were some, there was a lot of comparison that happened between the two of us because she was very much the tiny blonde cheerleader type. And I was very much the nerdy, bookish, bullied, <laughs> made fun of academic kid. So there was, we were very different. And I think that we, there were definitely some struggles that, that I went through just trying to figure out who I was when dealing with this person who seemed perfect. I think you always thought blondes were treated better than- Than redheads. Redheads. <laughs> yeah. And now pink hairs. <laughs> so. I loved your red hair though. Yeah. What do you love and hate most about being a parent? What do I love most about being a parent? I love seeing my kids do things that make them happy. I, and I love seeing them do things that I maybe didn't think they could. Like there were some touch and go moments towards graduation last, uh, graduation for my oldest kid. And I seeing him graduate was a huge thing for me. I was so happy just to, to, to know that these people are people and they can do amazing things. And it's just really neat to watch them achieve things that maybe I didn't think were possible. So, and my younger child is very talented and artistic and it's, it's fun to watch her come up with new ideas and create things. Um, I love that. Oh gosh, there are things that I hate about being a parent. I'm not going to lie. It's very hard. It's very hard. Um, and, you know, watching your kids struggle, you know, watching your kid want to throw themselves out of a car, running car, because they just don't think life is worth living anymore is one of the hardest things that I've ever had to deal with. Um, and we had several years of that and, um, it's, I hated it. It was, it was a very difficult time of my life and I am glad we're past that stage, but I, I, I hated watching someone I love so much have so much pain. Should answer that last time you cried, which is right now. <laughs> Just now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you love and hate most about being a parent? What I love most is to see all of my children succeed and they all have succeeded. They've all been at college educated. They've all been successful in their lives. And they all are still married after many years of marriage. To me, that's wonderful. Uh, what do I hate? I don't get to see all my kids and grandkids as often as I would like to see them. That's, uh, I have three that live out of state from us and I don't see them much. If I could do one thing to make our relationship better, what would it be? Probably call you more often, talk to you more often. I try to talk to, uh, to all the kids, but uh, I know you talk to your mother a lot, but I, I need to probably up that a bit. Fair enough. If I could do one thing to make our relationship better, what would it be? Um. Watch less news, Max. No, um, <laughs> I think that sometimes you're very stubborn and very set in your ways. And I, I know that over the last little while you've been working on that um, and you've grown more accepting of your kids and grandkids who have made decisions that maybe you don't agree with. But, you know, just showing us that you love us, and even though we may be didn't turn out quite as the way that you anticipated. Um, and just, you know, that's, that's your job as a parent. That's the job that I see a parent's job as, is, is to love their kids. And you may not appre appreciate or love everything that they do, but just to make sure they know that you still love and support them. 
What's one life lesson you had to learn the hard way? Oh, I think I've had to learn the hard way uh, myself, the amount of work it takes to really make a relationship work. I mean, I saw you and mom and I know the work that you put into your relationship, but that's something that I've had to experience myself. Um, that relationships take a lot of work. It's not, you can't just say, I love a person and things are great. It's showing up every day. It's making sure that you're communicating. It's um, still being there for the person when things get tough and knowing when to step back and let that person struggle is, is really difficult as well. Um, so I think that that's something that I've had to learn the hard way in my life. What's one life lesson you had to learn the hard way? I learned going through some very difficult business situations, especially when we had a total crash of the real estate markets and all the banks and all the real estate went under, foreclosed. And uh, when you're going through that, you don't know how you're going to come out of it. But I always know there's light at the end of the tunnel. And if you work hard and have good uh, faith and, and think uh, positive, things will get better and never give up. Getting to the bottom of the pile. What is one value we share? What is one that we hold differently? I think uh, one value we have that we share is we love our family, which is important. And uh, we're accepting of our family, even though they are, like sometimes they're different. I'm somewhat religious, as you know. It's very important to me. And uh, I spend a lot of time and effort and energy with that. And you don't. That's one value. Basically, I'm concerned about that, to be honest. I know. <laughs> I do know that. Sorry. What is one value we share and is, and is one that we hold differently? Um, I think that we both are very strong-willed. <laughs> I don't know if that's a value, but we're both very strong-willed and we both are very, like, I, I've already talked about this a little bit, but we're both very dedicated to things that are important to us and we're both, we both commit fully to things. Um, one thing that is different, I think politically we are very different as well, um, and that you are very conservative, like one of the most conservative people I know, I think, um, and I'm not. I, I don't align with conservative political values. So um, we can't really have conversations about that <laughs> because it ends up in a fight. <laughs> well, we don't fight. Uh, we haven't had any direct confrontations about it. Because we don't talk about it. <laughs> well, we've learned not to. Yeah. Sometimes it's easier just to leave the room than to have the conversation. So uh, that way we can keep our relationship um, good. So. All right. I'll re do a little rebuttal here. I'm very concerned about the direction our country's going. I think it's on a downward path and it's uh, not good. That's my feeling. Maybe you feel different. I don't think things are great, <laughs> but... Uh, the morality and the uh, lack of values that our country's in, got now really concerns me a lot. Well, I think we're all worried about the world we're leaving for our kids. So I think that's something we can agree on. <laughs> What did you get wrong about me when I was younger? I don't know if I got anything wrong about you. Uh, I remember an in incident uh, uh, when you were a senior in high school, you competed in the state. It's some very uh, musical talent that you had uh, singing. You were a beautiful singer. And uh, you ended up not getting to go to state and you came home and you said, I'll never sing again. And you really just ha had a total meltdown. And uh, I would try to prop you up and say, hey, we all have those kind of days. It wasn't your day. But uh, I think you came back from that because you did sing in the Atlanta choir, a women's choir or something. Is that right? I sang for a 
briefly for a group in yeah. Atlanta with a acapella. So you group. never gave it up, but you said I'll never sing again. Yeah, that that is true. I that was I remember that day very well. And what did you get wrong about me when I was younger? What did I get wrong about you when you were younger? I don't know that as a child you really see your parents as fully developed people. <laughs> I think you kind of see them as this extension of your life and it's it's hard to differentiate them from yourself because you're still learning who you are and trying to figure that out. So I don't know that I really saw you for the person that you are. I you know Is that good or bad? No, I just think kids are kind of selfish, you know, and I no different and you know I I just I think I had a hard time seeing you as a separate person. And I always wanted to make you proud and all of that. And now I've realized that I can step back from that and I'm who I am and you're who you are and it's okay if we're not always in alignment. Um, so I think I got that wrong. I don't, I, which maybe I didn't get wrong. Maybe I just wasn't old enough and experienced enough to realize that mm -hmm. you are your own person and that's, you're allowed to be your own person and have your own beliefs and values and and I'm allowed to do the same. So. How do you think life is different for kids today versus Mary's childhood? I mean, technology is obviously the big one. It's very different for our kids. They live in a different world in many ways, and they have to deal with things that we never did. I don't know that it's harder. I just think it's different. And that as people who didn't go through that, we just don't understand necessarily what they're going through. So the best thing we can do is just be there to support them. How do you think life is different for kids today versus your childhood? I think it's totally 180 degrees different. Uh, when we were kids, uh, we worked hard. Everything was goal-oriented. We we worked very diff. It was difficult sometimes, and uh, but we enjoyed life too. We had a lot of fun. I loved high school. Uh, today, I see kids, frankly, are a little bit lazy. Um, the teenagers I know, they don't have a lot of commitment. Uh, some do, but most don't. They're not dedicated to much of anything, and they spend all their time doing uh, social media. And it's, I think, some of them are addicted to it. I, I think that's a real problem. Well, you grew up on a farm, so you yeah. you did manual labor when you were a kid. Yeah, <laughs> which was good. Well, I'm glad I didn't have to do manual labor, so thanks for not going into the farm business. <laughs> what is your biggest regret? I don't know that I have many regrets at all. I think I've had a full life. I've enjoyed life. I am had a great family. I appreciate it. I wish my parents had been more together. I guess that's a regret. Uh, my mother was a city girl. My dad was a farmer and my, my mother hated the farm. And I wish that uh, they had been closer together. That's a regret. Other than that, for me, I didn't have any things that I'm really regretted about. What is your biggest regret? I wish I, I wish I was a better parent. I don't know if that's a regret necessarily, but I wish I had, you know, was there, and I, I can still fix that. My kids are still young enough, but I still, th I think I could do a better job with them. And I feel some regret around the kind of parent I've been. Well, I think uh, all of us could be better, you know, look back, we could have been better parents in certain aspects, but I think your kids uh, are doing really well considering, you know, uh, your oldest son who had some concerns, difficulties. Your daughter is a beautiful, smart, intelligent achiever. Mm -hmm. You've done well with her. She loves you a lot, too. So does Frankie. What is the one thing about our relationship or time together as a family that you hope I remember for the rest of my life? I, I don't know. I just hope that you remember that we're all doing our best <laughs> and uh, about our relationship. I just hope that you know that we do love each other in spite of our differences and that you remember that and keep it with you because I do love you 
and I appreciate you and you've done a lot for us throughout the 44 years I've been alive. Um, and I'm glad that we still have a relationship because a lot of people don't have a relationship with their parents. So I'm glad that even though we don't always agree that we're still able to, to have that relationship. So that's something I hope that you can remember. What is the one thing about our relationship or time together as a family that you hope I remember for the rest of my life? I hope that uh, you remember that uh, we were always supportive of you in everything that you did as a youth. As uh, you exhibited your talents, uh, I remember at your high school graduation, they had a uh, talent show or something at the end of the year, and you got up and started singing, and there were, a lot of kids were kind of ornery at that time, and they kind of started booing you. I remember. But before it was over, after you completed the the uh, musical number that you were doing, they were clapping and yelling. It totally changed their their feelings about your singing. So I remember that. That was important. What is the last thing I did that upset you? I don't know that I've ever really been upset with you about something you've done. I Sometimes I wish you would uh, go to church more often, but I, upsetting, I'm not sure I get upset very easily. I just uh, wish it were a little different. That's about it. What was the last thing I did that upset you? Do you wanna know? Sure. <laughs> um, I think sometimes you're hard on my oldest child. Um, at Thanksgiving, you were kind of rough. I remember saying to uh, you and uh, to Frankie and one of the other grandkids, if you guys keep playing video games, your bra bra brain's going to melt. And uh, you and, and my other I don't even daughter. think it was about that. It was you were fighting with Frankie about well, anyway, they, global warming or something and like climate change. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I just think... He's a kid. <laughs> well, I am, he was very animated about his belief. And I said, well, I'm a climate denier. So he, uh, he kind of was not listening he, to me. And he pulled up sources that were uh, credible and you were pulling up sources from Fox News. No, so. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't pay any attention to Fox News. Or Newsmax. Neither, none of that. I, I studied that a great deal. And I have a lot of sources that uh, refute climate change. I'm not saying the climate doesn't change. I think we can't control it. So I just, I think sometimes you get a little hard on some of the grandkids. Well, sometimes they deserve it. <laughs> oh, it's your turn. What do you th wish you could tell everyone about me that would make them understand me more? That you are one of the most determined and stubborn people I've ever met in my life and that you are, I don't even know that there's one thing that I would tell people to describe you. I just think that you are this person with lots of qualities. <laughs> uh, you're stubborn, you're hard-willed, but you're a hard worker. You're dedicated to your family, you're dedicated to causes you believe in. You, and I think if I tell people that we're very different, that also is a way that helps them to kind of understand them because we are very different in many ways. We're very similar in that we both are stubborn and hard-headed and <laughs> strong-willed, but I think we live our lives a little bit differently. And when I tell people about you, I often will say my dad and I are quite different, um, different kind of in some of our fundamental beliefs um, about the world. But with all that being said, that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just different. Um, with that all being said, I, I think one thing I would tell people is just that you are um, very, you're just very dedicated to things that are important to you and you don't stop. You just keep going. You're like I said, you're 81 and you're still working and still getting up and doing all the things that you love. And 
I learned the work habit from my dad. He, he quit working when he's 88. So. What do you wish you could tell everyone about me that would make them understand me more? Of all of our five children, you're, very, you're the brightest in terms of intelligence about uh, schoolwork and all the things that you work on and try to accomplish. You were a full scholarship at uh, University of uh, BYU and at Emory. I, you were an all-A student in high school, got a reward, award for that, and you are very, very smart. However, you sometimes you uh, have a, emotional problems, which you've already had alluded to. Yeah. What is your biggest wish for me? My biggest wish for you is that uh, you would uh, approach your life religiously a little bit more dedication and remember the things that you knew when you were young. Maybe, I, maybe you didn't know them, but maybe you've given them up. I don't know. What is your biggest wish for me? At this point in your life? Um, I want you to enjoy the rest of your life. You have lived this far. You've worked hard. It's time for you to enjoy what you've worked for so so hard for. We do a lot of traveling. We like to do that. Well, next time you need to upgrade mom to first class when you're going international. <laughs> you've earned it. <laughs> hey, we were raised by depression parents, and so we are very frugal. Yeah, silent generation mindset. Yeah but I want you to enjoy the rest of your life. And I enjoy it now. Good. I do. I like, I like what I'm doing. Good. Last question. Are you proud of me? If so, why? Am I proud of you? Yes, I am proud of you. You've done some pretty incredible things in your life. You came literally from nothing, farm boy from Kansas, and you worked very hard throughout your life to build a legacy. And um, I, I'm proud of that. I think that you've, and you've done it, and you even told us you did it all for us. So um, that's a pretty amazing thing. Not everybody has that. Um, parents who care and love them and want to build something for them. So that's something that I'm very proud of. I think that you've lived your life in a way that you can be proud of. And that's something that I'm proud of as well. I think that you've lived your life in a very honorable way. Thank you. Are you proud of me? If so, why? I'm very proud of you. I'm proud of you because you've overcome some of the obstacles that you had in your life and you uh, have succeeded in many areas of your life. You have a beautiful family. I'm very proud of that. And I know that you uh, enjoy the kind of work that you do, and you do a really good job at it. So I'm very proud. So thank you for answering these questions with me today, Dad. I've really enjoyed spending some time with you and just getting to know you a little bit better, and I really love you a lot. I think we can still be friends after this uh, event, and uh, I love you a lot too. Very proud of you. Thanks for being such a great dad. Thank you. 